Hey guys, Printer Dead Productions here, and welcome to the 10th Vim tutorial in this How to Use Vim series. So previously all of my Vim tutorials have been pretty action-packed. I've covered a lot of material in all of my previous tutorials. And in this tutorial I just want to kind of take it easy um, and just show you one key feature that will definitely help you out a lot. And that is using marks in order to save your spots in files. So one of the hardest parts about Vim, I think, is navigating a file. It's a lot harder to navigate a file when all you have is the keyboard. Uh, when you have a mouse, it's pretty easy because you just use the scroll reel, scroll up to where you want to go, and then you're there. However, using Vim, you have to use some combination of searching or J or K or anything like that. So um, one key feature, I think, is marking a file, which will allow you to quickly navigate to any area that has been marked. So let's go ahead and cover that in this tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and st get started by populating a file with a bunch of information. So Pardon the loudness of my keyboard, I still haven't figured out how to filter that out from the microphone, So, I, but I'm just going to populate this file with uh, some, some pertinent information. In fact, this part of the video is definitely not even pertinent to you. I'll be right back. Okay, so I definitely didn't populate this file with as much information as I wanted. However, I definitely got some lines that will allow us to cover the material that I want to cover in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you want to actually navigate this file, um, one of the key ways to navigate it is to just use J and K and H and L to actually get to where you want to go. Say, for instance, you wanted to get to, I don't know, the fifth line. You would go ahead and type 5 and capital G, and that would bring you to the fifth line. Um, and if you wanted to get to the end of the document, you can just type capital G. Beginning of the document is lowercase, lowercase G. Or lowercase G, lowercase G. Sorry, lowercase, lowercase. What am I doing? Anyway. But what if you didn't know the line numbers or you just wanted to... Because it's kind of cumbersome if you have a very, very large file to remember the line numbers of what the important parts are. So you can actually use marking in order to save these important parts for later access. So let's go ahead and start with an example. So this line here is is about in the middle of the file. This is a test file for the tutorial. So if we always want to be able to access this file, or this line rather, we can go ahead and mark it with some special letter. Um, so in order to mark, we would press the M key. And as you can see, once we press the M key, it pops up in the lower portion of Vim because that's the key that we've just pressed. And then we get uh, to choose a letter to save it to. So since this is the, let's just say this is the line we need to remember, we can save it to the R letter. So we go ahead and type in R. And then the M disappears because we've just marked that to R. So now if we want to access this, we go ahead and we type um, quotation mark and then R. Okay, whoops, not, not quotation mark, but actually apostrophe. My bad. So if we actually type apostrophe, which is the quotation mark without the shift, and then type R, it will actually take us to the part of the file that we marked as R. So as you can see, if we're at the beginning of the document, then we type apostrophe R, it brings us to where we marked. And if we're at the end, we type apostrophe R, it brings us to where we marked. Now, we, we um, can store way more than just one. Since we have many keys on the keyboard to press, we can store many things inside of the mark. So let's just say this next line here, um, um, it's pertinent because of something that starts with a T. So it's pertinent because of test, which starts with T. So we can go ahead and mark it with a T by typing in MT. And then if we're at the beginning of the document and we type apostrophe T, it'll take us to there. And then from here, we could type apostrophe R, and then it will take us to our previously marked line. So this is definitely useful for if we want to navigate something. So um, for instance, if you're writing a very large Java document and you have tons of functions and you have a function that you need to keep referencing, you have a few options to actually keep referencing it. The first option is you could create a split window and have the split window on that function. So that's perfect because you could still see the function on the side while you write inside of your, your document. Um, another option is to actually mark that area. So if it's a function for, let's say, appending to a file, you could go ahead and mark it with an A using MA. And then every time you need to reference it, you can just um, take your current position, mark it with, let's just say, C for a current. So if we mark our current position with C here, and then we want to go to our, uh, we want to reference our append function. So we type in 
apostrophe A to jump to our append function, and then we can type apostrophe C when we're done to return to our current position. And that's just a sample use of using marking. So all marking does is stores a current position inside of a what's known as a register. Now, there's definitely more uses to this than simply marking. For example, you can actually yank into a register and you can paste from a register. However, that's going to be in a future tutorial as I'm not even sure how exactly that works. So anyway, I did mention that I was going to keep this video short, so here's your short video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that this feature is useful for you and you find some, some sort of functionality that, uh, that you can apply this feature for. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you in future tutorials. Have a good one. Peace.